Welcome to the Saving Lives Podcast. I'm Eddie Joe. Today is the 2nd of March of 2021. The article that I'm going to be using as a reference to today's podcast is titled Energy Delivery Guided by Indirect Calorimetry in Critically Ill Patients, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. It was published just a couple days ago on the 27th of February in Critical Care Journal. I definitely recommend that you read the article for yourself and do not trust me on this matter. And another reason why I don't think you should trust me is because, to be honest, I did not know what in the world indirect calorimetry was, even after I finished fellowship. I mean, I went through so many years of medical school, so many years of residency, a couple years of fellowship, and I had never seen one of these devices before. I figured that it was just some fancy tool that existed at the fancy institutions that had a lot more money than the institutions that I was in to do research. To be honest, there was never any compelling evidence. I mean, theoretically, it seemed like like it worked, but there was never any compelling evidence nor really, really high quality study that piqued my interest to go down this rabbit hole. So throughout my career, at least thus far, I have never worked at an institution that has the ability to measure energy expenditure in our critically ill patients. So how's that for a disclaimer? But... I feel that we lack knowledge and we don't have, I just think we do a lackluster job overall in providing nutrition to our critically ill patients, which is why I have embarked on this journey to try to maximize the benefits of providing nutrition and not necessarily overfeeding our patients who are critically ill. So this article really, really caught my attention because it shows that there could be a mortality benefit based on this meta-analysis and systematic review. So spoiler alert, it shows that we could save some lives by using this particular technology. But the first question that you may have, and again, I also had the same question, so don't feel like you know, you're alone in this journey. Most people, I feel, do not know what indirect calorimetry is unless you are a registered dietitian. But your question is, what in the world is it and how do we perform it? I mean, ultimately, if there's a trusty registered dietitian who's listening to this and states that um, explaining it wrong or could potentially explain it better, I would be happy to invite them onto the podcast. But some of the earlier data shows, and I'm going to quote a particular reference study that was referenced by many, many other publications after by Porter and other researchers that state indirect calorimetry is based on the equations for oxidation of carbohydrate, protein, and fat. So what we need to do to obtain the numbers to plug into all these equations is to obtain the following variables. First of all is oxygen consumption, which basically implies both inspired as well as expired oxygen. You also need to know what the CO2 excretion is, in other words, the end tidal CO2. And you need to know the minute ventilation, or the, excuse me, the minute volume. So it honestly seems that this is much easier to obtain in people who are mechanical ventilation. Then, you know, these devices do math, they use all these fancy equations, and they get a number called the energy expend- expenditure, which is abbreviated to resting energy expenditure. And I know that, that's my, that this might seem like a lot, you know, like what what do we do with this energy expenditure and this resting energy expenditure and, and what device do we need to do this? So I myself didn't know this. Again, <laughs> we're on this journey together. That's why I like to make these podcasts because it helps me teach you what I just learned. I honestly did a quick Google search for indirect calorimetry machines and it showed some clunky looking machines that need to be hooked up to the ventilator. I don't know how much they cost. I don't know if they're worth it. These are questions that are still, you know, out there in the clouds. In fact, I was able to find a future where both the indirect calorimeter machine hardware and software is integrated within the ventilator, which sounds like it's pretty cool, but I know I don't have these ventilators at my institution. And to make it easier, you know, or not make things easier if you don't have these devices already the indirect calorimetry machines it seems like you'll get some pushback from administrators because all of this looks expensive but again let's get back to the subject at hand which was this systematic 
review as well as meta-analysis that was performed by these authors that, again, you should check it out for yourself in the show notes. We are shown by these data that over the many years that we've had this type of technology that has been quite challenging to gather robust data on indirect calorimetry in the critically ill. Overall, they used eight randomized control trials with a combined 991 patients. They performed, you know, all the statistical jumping jacks that they do for systematic reviews and meta-analyses. And what they found was that using indirect calorimetry to guide energy delivery significantly reduces short-term mortality in critically ill patients. So these patients in whom indirect calorimetry was performed had 0.77 times the risk of mortality compared to those who did not have the indirect calorimetry performed. So fewer people died, basically. But there was no difference in duration of mechanical ventilation, ICU, nor hospital length of stay. And what the, the way that the article worded it was a little bit weird because they said that it did not, using indirect calorimetry did not prolong duration of mechanical ventilation, ICU, or hospital length of stay which I think was pretty funny because, I mean, why would you say it did not prolong? Wouldn't you think that using it would actually shorten it? But again, I digress. I don't want to, I don't know if it was like a language barrier or something like that between the authors and what they were trying to say. To conclude, and again, I know this is a relatively short podcast compared to the other stuff I've created before, but again, I might The idea of all this was just to implant this idea or the concept of using indirect calorimetry for our critically ill patients on mechanical ventilation, because it might be something that you're going to start seeing in the future. So at least putting it in, you know, at least putting it in the lexicon or our thought process as something we could start doing in the future to help save lives. At least you're familiar with it. And when you hear it for the first time or it starts getting used for the first time, you can say, oh, yeah, that Eddie Joe dude, he talked about this in this podcast 25 years ago. So to conclude, the authors recommended that more studies should be conducted to confirm the findings that it does decrease mortality. Um, But again, I would like to know what you all think. I really would like to know if you have this type of technology in your particular institution and in your ICU. And, you know, if you feel like it makes a difference, because Overall, I dedicate a lot of time and effort to nutrition and ICU because, again, I feel like we need to do a better job. I feel like we do a suboptimal job. And, um, you know, in the future, we might look at this and say, hey, we could have done a better job with our patients. And I don't know. That, that's just my finishing rant. Either way, I hope you guys have a great, great day. Take care. Bye.